Lord. 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 I know it's getting late, but I, I really feel like the Lord put this message on my heart for somebody. And uh, I don't want you to miss this. I, uh, I've had a rough week this week. Hallelujah. I had some breakthrough in the altar last Wednesday. There was a position that I was put in where I had to humble myself. I was prideful in, in for the while, and I didn't want to confess my transgressions. I didn't want to come out and be ashamed of myself. But the Holy Spirit, listen, I'm glad that the Holy Spirit cares enough to talk to my pastor about me before he talks to me. Because it's a confirmation to me that the Holy Spirit really loves me. And he really loves you. And he don't want you to trust you. Yeah. He don't want you to trust your flesh. Yeah. He don't want you to trust your abilities or your self-righteousness. Right. Listen, I had a, this is so prophetic and so profound. This is a simple statement, but a guy quoted it to me at work, and he didn't even understand what he was saying. I said, hey, Juby, how are you this morning? He said, I'm good. He said, what about you? He said, I said, I'm blessed. God's good. He said, yeah, he is, but there's one thing. You know how old people are. He's like, well, there's one thing I was thinking about, though. And I said, well, what is that? And he said, well, Josh, why would I trust myself when God aligned the planets, but I can't even align marbles? Come on. Yeah. You can't keep marbles in the straight line, yet we want to trust what we can do. Yeah, right. Well, I have no confidence in the flesh. I have no confidence in my ability. I have no confidence in my self-righteousness. It is all from the finished work of the cross that I am able to walk in victory. Oh, yeah. It is all in what he's done. It is none of what I have done. Paul said, you've got to put to death the works of the flesh. Right. And how do we do that? Paul said in Galatians 5 and 15. He said, walk by the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. A lot of people is walking in the flesh trying to encounter the Spirit. You've got to walk in the Spirit to overcome the flesh. And you know what that means? You say, well, that's easy to say, Josh. That's easy to say, Pastor. How do I walk by the Spirit? It's when He tells you to do something, do it. When He tells you to go somewhere, go. When He says, tell that person the word that He's given you, then you give it to them. See, God has a path for your life. And it's not about your promotion. It's not about you being it's not about you being the pastor. It's not about you being the prophet. So that's something that I learned is I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. I had no desire to be a pastor. You would have told me the burden that it, that it takes to carry to be in this pastoral role. I would have told you that. But God saw something in me through him. He used Pastor Ron to bring it out of me. So, you know, what did I do? I just submitted to the plan. I trusted my spiritual authorities. I trusted my spiritual leaders. And what did they do? They, by God using them, he led me on the path that I was intended to go. I didn't have to exalt myself to this position. I was exalted as I humbled myself. Amen. And so I want you to understand that it's better to humble yourself than to be humble. Yeah. It's better to humble yourself to the altar than to be humbled to the altar. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. In the end of this, it says every mouth will confess and every knee will bow. And whether you're there or not, you're going to get there. Yep. Amen. It's better to be there now than then. Amen. We got a lot of pride in the church. We got a lot of pride in ourselves. We got a lot of pride in our abilities. That's got to die. Yeah. <coughs> Paul, I trust myself. I can't even align marbles. I'm going to try to get through this quick, but I, I hope you receive this. If you turn in your Bibles with me to 1 Kings, the title of this message is The Spirit of Adonijah. And when you get there, would you shout it in for me just to let me know? Chapter 1, verse 1. Everybody there? First Kings chapter 1 verses 1 it says now King David was old advanced in age and they covered him with garments but he could not keep warm he was at the point of his life where he could not produce enough heat on his own to sustain his life his body had become old his body had become weak the great King David was now dying 
And it says, so his servants said to him in verse 2, Have them search for a young virgin for my lord the king, and have her attend the king and become his nurse, and have her lie on your chest, so that the king may keep warm. Amen. Somebody grab your neighbor and say, I need you. So they searched for the beautiful girl throughout the territory of Israel and found Abishag the Shunammite, and they brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful, and she became the king's nurse and served him, but the king did not become intimate with her. And it's interesting that it says that. You know why? Because temptation don't stop when you get old. The devil don't care how far you've come. The devil don't care how far you've made it. He's still coming to tempt you. His goal is to separate you That's from right. God. That's right. It don't matter where you're from. It don't matter how far you go. The devil won't stop. Listen, this is a fight that we will always be in. Galatians 5 and 16 says, For the spirit warreth with the flesh, and the flesh with the spirit. So you cannot do the things that you would. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to try. That means that the Holy Spirit's going to convict you before you get there. Because he cares enough to lead you on the right path. You know what our flesh wants to do? It wants to exalt us. It wants to self-exalt. I, I want to earn my salvation to be better than you. You know what I'm saying? That's what the flesh says. The flesh says, I want to be better than everyone else. Come on. Now, understanding that the king has died. King David is on his deathbed. And what does this mean? That someone would have to come up in his stead. Right. When you come to Jesus Christ, you were at the end of your reign. And now you are at a position to where someone has to continue in your stead. And can I ask you, will it be the promise of the Father? Or will you allow your flesh to continue dominating come your on. life? Come on. Thank you, brother. The king was at death. You've been the king of your life for a long time. It's time to make the change. Yeah. It's time to put the flesh away. It's time to stop giving in. It says the righteous fall seven times and get back up. Let the times you fall be in the altar. Don't fall and stay down. If you fall, fall to the altar and get back up. David was on his deathbed. You're at your deathbed when you come to Jesus. You're dying. Amen. Now, what will you allow to reign? Now, the first point I have if you're taking notes is entitlement produces self-exaltation. Amen. So now, verse 5. Now, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. So he prepared for himself, y'all catch that, chariots and horsemen with 50 men to run before him. Now, why would Adonijah think to exalt himself to king? Why would Adonijah find himself in a position to say, I'm going to be the king? Well, if you look at the lineage of the sons of King David, he was number four in the line. The first one was Amnon. Amnon died because he tried to, I believe it was to rape one of his brother's daughters. Amen. But then Chiliab disappeared as number two. Absalom was killed in war. And fourth, according to the flesh, the flesh, he was entitled to the throne. Amen. Your flesh feels entitled to dominate and rule your life. Elijah represents the flesh. Now, who do we know to truly be the one who would position himself as king? The promise of the father, King Solomon. Amen. Now, can I tell you that King Solomon was a foreshadowing of Jesus? Come on. Because just as he came after the father with a replicate heart and a replicate will, he followed in the same footsteps. Amen. But this is what we have to understand here. Adonijah represents the flesh. And King Solomon represents the promise of the Father, the Spirit. And now you are at a point in your life where you have to die, but someone's got to reign in your steed. Will it be your flesh or will you let the promise of the Father carry out its will in your life? Notice he had to prepare his own way. Look, if you've got to prepare your own way, if you've got to make your way to get to the top, if you've got to do everything to achieve the satisfaction that you want, then God ain't in it. God opens the door of provision. God walks with us through the plan that he's given us. If he gave you a destination, he's anointed you to reach it. But he ain't anointed you to sin. He ain't anointed you to let your flesh rule. The Bible says this. It says... He that humbleth himself will be exalted, but he that exalted himself will be humbled. Notice King Solomon ain't appeared in this. He's off doing the will of the Father. But the flesh is rising up. And you know what? He built his own following. He said he went and got the mighty men. 
He provided himself the horsemen, the chariots, and he said, I will be king. When you exalt yourself, you've got to do all the climbing. You're operating in your own strength. When you're operating on pride and entitlement, God can't use you because he can't trust you. If God can't trust you, he can't use you. He can trust what his spirit's going to accomplish because he sent it forth. But he can't trust your flesh. And as long as you trust that, God's will will not be done in your life. Amen. See, many of y'all are, are, are suffering from the pains of life because you're leaning to your will and allowing your flesh to dominate your decision making. Amen. Amen. But God wants to lead you in the righteous path by his spirit so you can experience not happiness, but true joy. Amen. Come on. Come on. And his father never rebuked him at any time by asking, why have you done so? And he was a very handsome man. He was born after Absalom. Well, you can fool man, but you can't fool God. Amen. You might come up within yourself the plot and the plan, but if God didn't give it to you, it ain't going to work out anyway. Come on. Come on. But he says his father never rebuked him at any time. He didn't know. King David did not know that Ananiah was doing this. And you know why I didn't tell him? Because pride hates accountability. Amen. Pride hates to be accountable. Held accountable. It only wants to do self. Because you know, let me tell you something. If you can give your plan to your spiritual authorities, God didn't give it to you. Come on. If you've got an idea that is erupted in you in pride, oh, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go do that, but you're afraid to tell the pastor because you think he's going to shoot it down, God did not give it to you. Amen. Come on. That's right. God sees our motives. God sees our intentions. God knows what we're coming up with. You know what the spirit of Adam and Well, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Now he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruah, verse 7, and Abiathar the priest, and they allied themselves with Adonijah. Now, why Joab and why Abiathar? Because Joab had some, had some contempt with King David in the book of 2 Samuel. They had a disagreement. There was some bitterness already rooted there. And why Abiathar the priest? Because he was always put second to Zadok. There was always some resentment. Can I tell you, the spirit of Adonijah preys on brokenness to try to form an allegiance against spiritual authority. See, the spirit of Adonijah uses those who are broken, broken and bitter to do this. And I feel like when it comes into a church, it causes division. See, when we figure out our plan, you need to disregard it and ask God what he needs you to do. It's not about you. It's not about you reigning. But he couldn't understand this. So what did he do? He only pulled people that wouldn't hold him accountable. You need counsel. You need the multitude of safety that surrounds you that is your spiritual leaders. I, I wouldn't be where I am today without Pastor Ron Merrill. Amen. I'm going to just say that. I could have said what I wanted to do. I could have went and done this and that. I could have went to this church and that church. But at the end of the day, had I not submitted to my spiritual authorities, I would have never been lying. Amen. Come on. Verse, verse 9. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fattened steers by the stone of Zoalath which is beside him Robel, and he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. Now let me tell you, his motives look godly. Everybody saw him doing the ritual practice. Everybody saw him, and it sounded like a good idea. Well, who knows, just because you put Jesus on it, don't make it of God. Just because you tag Jesus to your plans and your understanding and your way that you want to go does not mean it is God's will. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll sacrifice the calf and the steer because we want it to make it seem like God told us to do it. You can fool man, but you can't fool God. And our flesh just wants to rise us up. Our flesh just wants to exalt to king. Our flesh wants to dominate us. And it'll go through the motions. It'll practice the legalistic behavior. But the spirit of God is just not in it. Notice the focus on his efforts. Notice what he said. I will be king. I will prepare my horsemen. I will prepare my following. Listen, if you've got to build your following, God didn't get it to you. I know, I know this is plain. But I really I feel like these points need to be driven. You don't have to promote yourself. 
When you do what God does, he's going to lead you to those who need you. It ain't about what you can do for them. It's about what he can do through you to set them free. Amen. 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 Point number two is we can either humble ourselves or be humble. I found myself struggling with pride. And what the Lord did, he broke me. He broke me. He made me humble myself. When if I had recognized the flesh rising up in the beginning to exalt itself to king of my life, I should have humbled myself. I should have brought myself to the altar. I should have repented the first time that it happened. But you know what I did? Because I dusted it off and I said, you know what? I'm okay. Oh, man. No, I opened the door. And Jesus said in Luke 4, 14, 8 through 11, he said, when you're invited to the wedding feast, he said, don't put yourself in the place of honor. Lest someone more honor will come and you be asked to depart and sit in the other. He said, but rather humble yourself so that men will exalt you and you will receive honor among them. Wow. See, when I exalt myself in my pride, it leads to my own humility. It leads to me being humbled in the altar. I'm just trying to save somebody because I went through a lot of pain this week. And I want you to understand, you, you've got to humble yourself. Right. Because at some point, whether you like it now or later, you're going to be humble. Yeah. And that's going to hurt. Let me save you some pain. Get to the altar. Get to the place where you can say, Lord, I've done this. I've allowed this to happen. Now I need you to cleanse me. I need your blood to wash me. If you move down into 1 Kings, to verse 41, it says, Now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard as they were finished eating. When Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Why is the city making an uproar? Verse 42, While he was speaking, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, came. And Adonijah said, Come in, for you are a valiant man, and you bring good news. But Jonathan replied to Adonijah, On the contrary. Everybody say contrary. Contrary. Our Lord King David has made Solomon king. See, the flesh will only give you a temporary reign. The flesh will only give you a temporary joy. The flesh will only give you a temporary happiness. Amen. But there's going to a, come, a point where you face reality. The flesh is not the king of your life if you've been born again. When you come to Christ, you're at the end of your life and you must decide who will reign in your steed. Will it be your flesh? that leads to death, or will it be your spirit that leads to life? Yes, sir. You cannot let Adonijah rise to power. You cannot let him rise to power. Because he's selfish. We're selfish. We're entitled. We're prideful. We're arrogant. We want the high place before we've been to the low place. But God says, i got to humble you there so I can exalt you to the top. You can't skip God's process. Amen. Oh, it says the king has also sent him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah the son of Jehoiada, the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and they have mounted him on the king's mule. I felt like I was reading the King James right there. Amen. But listen, in the same way that God made him a public example of victory, he'll make you a public example of humility. Right. Amen. Because look, just as he put Jesus on the cross and made a public example of Satan, when you let me tell you something. When you walk in willful sin after receiving the Holy Spirit, you put Jesus to an open shame. Amen. You crucify him again. Amen. You put him to death because you've allowed yourself to come to life. Amen. Verse 49, then all the guests of Adonijah trembled and got up and each went on his way. Why? Why? Because the truth was revealed. The truth don't entertain your lust. The truth don't entertain your desires. It does not fulfill your flesh. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Amen. Amen. Verse 50. Adonijah was afraid of Solomon. And he got up and he went and looked. And he took horns. Took hold of the horns of the altar. Now look, I find this funny because he wasn't really sorry. You find on later on that he did it again. But he wasn't really sorry. He just wanted it to look like he was in the right position so he didn't lose his physical life. Come on. He's got to die. Adonijah has to die. Your flesh has to die. Your sexual desires have to die. Your thieving has to die. Your drinking has to die. Amen. You cannot let it live. You cannot let it rain. It will destroy you. It's better to humble yourself than to be humbled because the truth is going to wake you up one day and it's either going to be up there or it's going to be down there. Hello, somebody. He wasn't sorry. 
Stop trying to manipulate God. Stop trying to look good for the people. Get undignified. Yes, sir. Say, Lord, I need you more than I need their approval. Yes. Father, I don't care what they look at me like. I need you. Yes. I don't need me. I don't need my desires. I don't need anything I can produce. I need the sanctifying work of God. Amen. Come on. You can't fix yourself. You can't position yourself. You cannot place yourself in a position to go to the, to the top. Come on. Come on. Let me tell you something. You'll only go, Jesus can only take you as high as you want you, as you want to go. Amen. You know, he took the flesh to the pinnacle of the temple. He took Jesus to the top of the pinnacle and said, I'll give you all this. But can I tell you, God wants to take you higher than that. You're so fixed on the kingdoms of this world that you don't see the glory of heaven that is before Woo! you. Come on. And Solomon said, he's a worthy man. I'm sorry, I'll skip the verse. Hey, look, you can trick man. What does it say in 1 Samuel 16, 7? God looks at the outward appearance. Our man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Oh, you got to get your heart right. Whoa. Listen, I don't care if you look holy in this altar or not. If you ain't born again, you're going to hell. Yeah. If you don't kill the old man, he's going to kill you. That's right. Either your pride is going to cost you or it's going to cost you. That's Yep. Now it was reported to Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon. So you fear him for his physical life. Too many of y'all are afraid to let go of things. Too many of y'all are afraid because you think your peace is gone. Can I tell you that bottle there ain't no peace in it? I looked in the bottom of it for a long time. I drank it to come back to reality and find out that I was still miserable, that I was still depressed, that I was still just in anxiety. And when God came to visit me with the things of the living water, my thirst was quenched. I found true joy. I found true happiness. The old man no longer reigned. Amen. And King Solomon said, if he is a worthy man, not one of his hairs will fall to the ground, but if wickedness is found in him, he'll die. So King Solomon sent men, and they brought him down from the altar, and he came and prostrated himself before King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, go to your house. Listen. You're going to find yourself in circumstances when you self-exalt that if you don't get right with God first, your life may be taken from the consequences. And if it's taken and you're not right with Him, you don't make it to heaven. He went to the altar before He went to King David. I mean, King Solomon. Because no matter if you've transgressed man, if you've transgressed God, there is a higher penalty. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Your flesh must not bow. I mean, your spirit must not bow to your flesh, but your flesh must bow to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, point three. Sparing the flesh produces cycles, not seasons. See, in 1 Kings chapter 2, 15 and 17, Adonijah had been sent home. He was told to go to your house. He was said, you're good, go, whatever. I'm over it, I forgive you. But Adonijah came to Bathsheba. And Adonijah said, hey, uh, you know I'm supposed to be king. See, the entitlement never left. The sin still persisted because the flesh was not crucified. And he said, Bathsheba, if you would ask the king if I can have Abishag the Shunammite as my wife, the concubine upon King David's death. He said, I want her to be my wife. And it's interesting they put that there because at that time, if you married the wife's concubine, you were next in line to assert the throne of the king. So what did he do? Just like Satan did in the garden, he attacked the woman. Right. Man, you better protect your household. You better make sure that devil ain't talking to your wife. Amen. Because he's coming. He'll destroy your family through your wife. Amen. He won't come to you. But she, he went to Bathsheba. And he said, I want her as a wife. Go and petition this for me. And see... When you don't put the flesh to death, you will always continue in a cycle of your sin popping back up. There was a period of time where it went away because maybe you walked it strengthfully for a little while, but you did not kill the issue and therefore it came back to life. Am I helping somebody? Yeah, man. That must die. Your, your sin has to die. You cannot just wipe it off and put it away and say you're fine. I've done that. It didn't work. King Solomon did that. It didn't work because now look where we're at. We're with him trying to assert the throne again. Your flesh will never stop trying to assert the throne if you don't kill it. 
Now, in those days, the royal harms, they, they took possession of the king's concubine. This was a declaration of one's right to the throne. Your flesh wants to dominate you, but as long as you let it, you'll be in cycles. But if you allow the promise of the Father to lead you and guide you, he will take you into new seasons. you got to put Adonijah to death. you got to come to the end of you. Your reign has to end, and the promise of the Father has to take speed. I want to ask you this morning, are you ready to pray tonight? Like are you tired of being depressed? Amen. Are you tired of being anxious? Amen. Are you tired of, of hitting the joint to come back to just a murdered reality? Amen. Are you tired of drinking the bottle only to be in the next one with no joy at all? Listen, God, God don't want happiness for you. He wants joy. That's and you're right. searching for that which is temporary when he wants to give you what's eternal. Amen. Amen. You, you, you're enjoying the happy things rather than the temporary to temporary, but God wants to give you the glory to glory. Amen. You're going through cycles, but God wants seasons. Amen. God don't want the world for you. He wants the kingdom. Are you ready to crucify your flesh? Are you ready to humble yourself? Amen. It says, walk by the Spirit, Galatians 5 and 15, and you will not fulfill the desires of your flesh. I encourage you, stop trying to put yourself up here. If you'll position yourself down here, God will do what he needs to do. Because he can't take you higher than where you want to be. Amen. Come on. And so that's all I got. That's good preaching. Galatians what? Galatians 5. Okay. Oh, microphone cut off. No, it didn't. There it goes. Okay. Hey, but hear me out. Listen, you ain't got to be ashamed of your sin. You should be ashamed of it, but you got to put it to a public shame. Hey, man. I want to encourage somebody. Listen, don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what they're going to say. Don't matter about what it looks like. You don't care and dance undignified in the Lord in a form of worship that God will cleanse you and wash you. Let his fire come down from heaven as you enter his great gates for thanksgiving and let him wash you of your iniquity. Let him wash you of your alcoholism. Let him wash you of your pornography. Let him wash you of your addiction. And I promise you, that encounter will take you further than you can take yourself. Amen. Amen. Please get in these altars. Don't hide it no more. Because if you hide it, it's going to expose you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen.